Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Halo pemirsa dimanapun Anda berada Saat ini Anda sedang menyaksikan ruang bisnis Nah kesempatan di kali ini sangat spesial sekali Karena kita akan membahas sesuatu yang sangat hangat ya Yang lagi hangat yaitu tentang Ternyata ada ya yang namanya kripto syariah. Nah, tapi ini tidak ada di Indonesia ya. Tapi kita akan belajar langsung dengan Mr. Philip dan juga Bapak Hoiril Anwar. Nah, sebelum itu saya Indah Kumbaidi yang akan memandu jalannya program kali ini. Kita kenalan dulu ya pemirsa. Pertama di sini sudah ada Bapak Hoiril Anwar selaku dari ini ya. Marshef Syariah Lawyer ya, lawyer dari Malaysia. Bagaimana kabarnya? Terima kasih, baik. Terima kasih. <laughs> baik sekali. Ini kita panggilnya Bapak atau C ini? Bapak pun bisa, C Bapak, pun bisa. Bapak pun bisa, C ya. pun bisa. Okay. Yang mana yang senang ya? Eh, yang mana yang senang ya? ya. Oke. Okay. Bagaimana kabarnya tadi? Sudah sehat ya? Sampai di Indonesia kapan kemarin? Pak? Alhamdulillah saya sudah sampai di Indonesia. Tengah hari tadi. Tengah hari tadi. Waktu tengah hari, hari ini tadi. ya berarti. Hari ini. Wow, siang tadi Dan, berarti. Ya, Alhamdulillah. Oh, Semua perjalanan selamat. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Oke. Okay. Kalau itu sudah ada Bapak Khairil Anwar ya, selaku Marishef Lawyer dari Malaysia. Di sini juga ada Mr. Philip Tam, CEO Green X Corporate Hong Kong. Hello, Mr. Philip. Hello. Hello. How thank are you, you today? Okay. I'm here well, and thank you for inviting <laughs> me, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Okay. And the first, so welcome in Indonesia, and thank you. especially in TV9 Nusantara. Hope you enjoy thank you very in much. the studio, yeah. and I hope you like with the Indonesia, right? Very much. Okay. Okay. So before we start the discussion uh, and share some story here, uh, I will. I believe our audience want to hear about the special guest today. So, first I will asking Mr. Philip, can you share your introduction a bit? So, in Indonesia have a idiom, uh, tak kenal maka tak sayang means, uh, I if don't know, I cannot love you. Mm. So, in Indonesia have tak kenal maka tak sayang. So, let's introduce yourself. Okay, so I'm Philip Tam, I'm from Hong Kong. Um, I actually come from a traditional finance background. Um, Training-wise, I was trained as a chartered accountant uh, a little while ago. And uh, I've been in uh, lo you know, multinational companies like General Electric, GE, wow. uh, HSBC. Um, and I also, with a very sign in the US, did a lot of IT, security, mobile networking, but I'm not a technical guy. <laughs> okay. um, I'm mostly okay. um, you know, involved with the um, the business requirement, oh, what, what the okay. user needs, you know, uh, yeah. business development, and uh, also uh, with the Hong Kong Jockey Club, which is one of the largest charity organization in the world before I started this. So four years ago, um, mm -hmm. I was involved with uh, um, doing a, mm -hmm. at that time it was a cryptocurrency exchange. Oh, wow. But then we thought um, uh, a lot of crypto we find as, um, you know, uh, one dollar today, nothing tomorrow. Oh. Okay, or 500 tomorrow, yes. but uh, a lot of them disappeared. So with our background, because we have a lot of companies um, do IPO, mm. okay, and do financial uh, management. Um, so we thought the world is going to move towards the digital, okay. Traditional IPO stock is going to be digitized, okay. They will be digital exchange. So we started a digital asset exchange and we focus on bringing business yes. okay and what we now call real world assets wow. okay a, a business table wow. is something we can touch yes. okay a, a television station mm. right um, so we have the business we talk to the client we understand the business model we meet them I see okay yes. um, and then we see that they actually have revenue mm. okay they have cash flow and they have management team. Then the business, what we do is we tokenize the business. Okay? And then that token become what, what we call a uh, digital asset. Okay? And that can be bought by every day, you know, you and me. Uh, because a lot of assets are very, very high value. Okay? Like some of the assets I can show you later. Um, like antiques. Antiques painting can be tens of millions of dollars. But we also want a piece. Oh. It's a long-term oh. investment, right? So now, with the token, what we call the ROWA token, mm -hmm. 
uh, you can actually do that. Now, because we came from Malaysia, um, is the Muslim is one of the la is, is the largest you know uh, community, and we also believe in the, um, the Islamic principle you know about fairness. It's very very important about ESG, okay, uh, about the world sh you know should be sustainable technology. Mm, that's, that's it. Um, so that's how why we have an ESG Sharia compliant. Um, digital asset exchange. Oh, wow, so amazing, Mr. Philip. Oh, okay. We will move with Pak Khairil dulu ya. Ini supaya kita bisa lebih akrab, Pak Khairil sure. mungkin bisa diceritakan yeah. sedikit. Ini backgroundnya kan adalah Mas Riev Syariah Lawyer dari yeah. Malaysia. Mungkin yeah. bisa sharing sedikit bagaimana. Oh, ternyata ada Syariah Lawyer yeah. di Malaysia. Silakan. Yeah. Terima kasih yes. uh, dan terima kasih juga kepada TV 9 Nusantara dengan jemputan ini ya. Uh, sebenarnya uh, saya baru tahu Philip dulu di HSBC. Oh, wow. Saya pun sebenarnya <laughs> adalah bekas banker, ex banker, oh. 13 tahun di HSBC wow, so di Malaysia dan saya bertugas selama 14 tahun di Bank Islam di Dubai dan Abu Dhabi. Hmm. Empat tahun di Dubai uh, dan sepuluh tahun di Abu Dhabi. Uh, sebenarnya uh, le lebih kepada uh, uh, melalui uh, pengetahuan saya hmm. ataupun pengalaman saya sebagai bekas uh, ahli bank yang selama 18 tahun fokus saya adalah dalam perbankan Islam. Jadi itu yang membuatkan saya terpanggil untuk meluaskan lagi bidang perbankan Islam. Jadi pada tahun 2018, saya decided, saya membuat satu keputusan untuk pulang ke Malaysia dan, uh, dan menubuhkan satu uh, syarikat penasihat syariah yang mana saya sebagai ex-banker yang tahu apa itu produk-produk syariah dan juga mengetahui juga apa itu kehendak-kehendak syariah hmm. dan saya ah. gabungkan pengetahuan ini untuk membuatkan satu syarikat penasihat hmm. uh, Masrif Advisory. Uh, tapi yang jelasnya sekarang, uh, dunia kewangan sudah menjadi begitu digital. Uh, dunia kewangan sudah, sudah berubah daripada perbankan, daripada fund management yang begitu ya, tapi di, dilahirkan atau dimanifestkan dalam bentuk yang lebih digital, hmm, digital. Uh, seperti yang uh, uh, Tuan Philip cakapkan tadi contohnya uh, real world asset real asset, hmm. meja, bangunan, tanah macam mana kita nak digitalkan dan menjadikan ini satu aset kelas yang baru. Jadi jadi inilah yang membuatkan saya terpanggil untuk lebih uh, lebih banyak involve atau melibatkan diri dalam perbankan Islam dan juga perbankan yang digital, kewangan Islam yang lebih digital. Ya itulah uh, latar belakang saya. Wow, so amazing ya. Jadi pemirsa memang narasumber di Episode kali ini sangat spesial sekali. Ada Mr. Philip Tam selaku CEO Green X Corporate asal Hong Kong asli ya, asli really Hong Kong ya, real Hong Kong. <laughs> no tipu-tipu ya. Dan juga ada Bapak Khairil Anwar selaku Mas Riev Syariah Lawir asal Malaysia. Oke, kita masih akan terus membahas. Ternyata ada ya yang namanya kripto syariah. Penasaran? Kita akan sharing-sharing. Uh, pemirsa, di segmen sebelumnya kita sudah mendengarkan, wah ini sudah ada yang baru nih ya, ada yang hangat yang sedang kita bincangkan. Oke, kita langsung uh, asking you, Mr. Philip, uh, CEO Green X Corporate. So, I will asking you about what is the Green X Corporate? So, Green X actually is a wholly owned uh, oh. subsidiary mm -hmm. um, of our parent company called Green Pro Capital is actually listed mm -hmm. uh, on the NASDAQ, yes. NASDAQ US uh, almost 10 years. So Green Pro is a financial services company. That's what I previously explained. We come from a traditional finance yes. um, and it's regulated 
So Green X actually wow. is a regulated. form and regulated by Labon Financial Services Authority, okay, the Labon FSA. Um, so because we are licensed regulated, so there are a lot of compliance that we need to do, uh, like doing, you know, typical yes. the KYC, we have to look at all our client um, and all the transaction, we have to keep the record because that is for regular uh, compliance reporting. Um, so that's the background mm -hmm. of the, the Green Pro, yes. uh, Green X actually, our Green X Digital Asset Exchange. And our focus um, is on what I previously explained, oh. so on the RWA actually token. Now that is, um, after we have selected the project, okay, then we do extensive due diligence, you know, review, talking to experts, talking to the company, and looking at the business plan, and then decide whether this business, this project, uh, can be tokenized, okay? Um, that is the number one thing to do, you know, checking properly, mm. everything exists. Um, that's why when you said about crypto Sharia, yes. we're not here to say crypto is Sharia. We're saying this, this RWA token, mm. okay? That is from our project, okay? After we've gone through um, all the detailed work, Okay, and then we produce like an IPO document explaining what the business is all about, what the future is about, you know, with financial projections, valuation, uh, and then we would work with Masra, ah. with Cairo's company, because they are the Sharia uh, scholar, the Sh our Sharia advisor. So we look at whether the business would qualify and would comply, okay, uh, the Sharia requirements. Yeah, so this is what we do, and so far, I have done more than 12 um, RWA STO, mm. you may call it. So they're very exciting um, projects, okay, you know, involving, you know, um, gemstones um, from a 12.3 kilogram gemstone that I previously <laughs> tokenized. Uh, that's a Guinness Book of Record. If you Googled it, okay, it's called Millennium Sapphire, uh, 150 million US dollars. And going forward, Okay, we have a uh, gemstone from Malaysia. Um, each gemstone has a uh, is sapphire. Actually, mm. specifically, they are sapphire. Wow. And maybe later I can show you some of the photos and show <laughs> the audience what we, what we yes, really yes, mean. Yes. And um, EV battery technology. So battery for electric vehicle. Uh, so all of these, um, yes. uh, you know, we would initially, um, after we've done all the due diligence, the business plan, the documentation, then we work with um, the Sharia advisor. Uh, after that is completed, uh, the, our listing committee in Greenex, you know, we will further review it, okay, to make sure that um, it complied with our requirement for a listing. Okay, then the token uh, can be traded, okay, on the on our exchange. Wow, so adorable, yeah, adorable things. Yeah. So, Mr. Philip, we move to Mr. Hyril again. Uh, so, Pak Hyril, nah, di sini saya juga kaget ya. Ini ada syariah lawyer di Malaysia, ya. Jadi mungkin bisa sharing-sharing juga bagaimana terkait dengan syariah lawyer yang sudah ada di Malaysia ini. Mungkin kita juga bisa belajar-belajar lebih banyak ya dari sini. Silakan, Pak. Dari segi syariah penasihat syariah yes. ataupun ya uh, di Malaysia uh, memang ada banyak penasihat-penasihat syariah di Malaysia yang didaftarkan kebanyakannya didaftarkan bersama dengan Securities Commission of Malaysia uh, contohnya Masrif Advisory adalah salah satu syarikat yang berdaftar dengan Securities Commission uh, of Malaysia Selain daripada itu, Securities Commission Malaysia itself, dia pun ada penasihat syariah juga. Yang kita panggil sebagai syariah, syariah advisory council of Securities Commission. Begitu juga Bank Negara Malaysia atau The Central Bank pun ada syariah advisory council of Central Bank. Bank-bank Islam di Malaysia pun ada syariah komiti. Uh, untuk bank-bank Islam untuk company-company takaful di Malaysia jadi pentingnya ada penasihat-penasihat syariah 
Contohnya macam Masrif uh, Advisory mm-hmm. Pentingnya adalah supaya uh, produk-produk keuangan Akan mendapat pantauan untuk pastikan produk-produk itu Betul-betul uh, mengikut kehendak-kehendak syariah Contoh yang kalau kita tengok apa yang uh, Mr. Philip cakap tadi Uh, real world asset uh, batu-batu permata atau gemstone yang yang Philip uh, cakap tadi ini adalah aset-aset yang betul-betul wujud. Hmm. Jadi dari segi uh, digital asset akan ditokenizekan, akan oh. dikecilkan, ditokenizekan menjadi token dan penasihat syariah perlu memastikan aset itu wujud. Hmm. Aset itu mempunyai uh, nilai Dan aset itu dapat dibahagi-bahagikan de, 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 Dibahagikan dari segi uh, uh, Hak milik Common common hak milik Hak milik bersama ya. Jadi dari segi itu kita dapat lihat Aset itu ada, aset itu betul Sebelum kita sahkan bahawa ini adalah Digital aset hmm. yang patuhi syariah Tiap-tiap tahun, uh, kadang-kadang kurang daripada satu tahun, kita akan juga melihat sama ada uh, digital asset itu masih wujud uh, untuk pastikan uh, ka, uh, digital asset atau token-token yang dah dibuat itu mematuhi uh, kehendak-kehendak syariah. Jadi itu adalah penting uh, untuk penasihat-penasihat syariah melakukan tugas untuk memastikan yang uh, digital token betul-betul uh, mengikut kehendak syariah. Ya. Wow, ya. itu. itu Tapi itu. apakah uh, ini memang diregulasi oleh pemerintah dari Malaysia sendiri atau mungkin berbeda atau ya, ada banyak itu. kalau di Malaysia? Ya, terima kasih. Itu satu soalan yang bagus ya. Mm-hmm. Sebab itu di, di Malaysia kita ada contoh di yang saya cakap tadi. Uh, Uh, Securities uh, uh, Commission of Malaysia mm-hmm. Ada Syariah Advisory Council Jadi apa yang uh, Masrif perlu lakukan Mestilah mengikut apa yang telah ditentukan Oleh Syariah Advisory Council Of Securities Commission Untuk macam uh, digi, uh, Green, Green X. X Digital Exchange Adalah digovernkan atau Di uh, Licensekan oleh Labuan Financial Services Authority oh. Jadi di Labuan Financial Services Authority Pun ada uh, Syariah Advisory Council Jadi uh, Masrif Adalah di uh, Ditauliahkan untuk menjadi Penasihat Syariah di bawah LFSA. Jadi memang kita Kena perlu pastikan oh. Dan okay, okay. Uh, semuanya mengikut Sebab yeah. sebab LFSA Syariah Advisory Council Akan pastikan Semua ini ki- Kita memang uh, Uh, report kepada Syariah Advisory Council uh, untuk pastikan semuanya mengikut lunas-lunas syariah. Iya, yeah. wow, iya, yeah. keren ya. Okay, Mr. Philip, uh, I will ask you again, what are the focus Green X Corporate for the future with the digital asset and anything in Green X? Yes, um, we ex- we are now um, with the token that we have. Um, listed so we have four uh, actually by the end of this year we expect mm. to have 10 of our project uh, will, will be will be listed and we're building that because we're bringing in a lot of, lot of exciting um, businesses um, from gold mine in the US okay this is one of the largest um, you know tokenization project mm. uh, yes. it's six billion US dollar valuation oh. and the project itself is expanding You know, it's doing very well, and we have an EV technology that I pre- previously explained. Um, and going forward, we have the sapphire, rare gemstone. Um, each of them, um, we're talking about at least about you know five carat plus mm. um, a million, you know, hundred thousand, a million, two million, and one piece I actually you know held with the uh, uh, with our client. Um, it's a blue cotton blue sapphire, 189 carats. It's huge. Okay. Um, and then also, uh, we have rare earth element. Okay, um, this is uh, rare earth element 17, and they are used extensively in cell phone, mm-hmm. um, EV car motor, actually spy satellite, 
you know, spy plane, you know, because the coating, the, the stealth, not using, you know, rare earth element. Well, those are very exciting. Um, and also, uh, one that we're very much looking forward to, because it would, mm. people would say, wow, is uh, yes. uh, meteorite. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you more about it later. Wow. <laughs> Oke okay, pemirsa, nah, pemirsa ini pembahasan yang sangat menarik sekali Kalau misalnya kita berbicara tentang kripto ya Itu pasti tidak akan lepas dari yang namanya Bitcoin Kita akan tanyakan langsung ya kepada Mr. Philip Oke, okay. Mr. Philip, I will ask you about what is the Bitcoin So, crypto and Bitcoin is sejoli ya In Indonesia we, have, we call sejoli It's hmm. not um, bisa dipisahkan ya Jadi, what is the Bitcoin? So, Bitcoin, um, why, is it, why is it cryptocurrency? Mm. It's based on cryptographic, oh, cryptography, yes. that's how it came from. And Bitcoin is the very first token, you know, cryptocurrency created, and based on blockchain technology. So what is blockchain technology? Uh, in a simple word, uh, it's ledger. You know, mm. I'm an accountant, ledger. I understand oh. your credits. <laughs> so it used to be centralized. The world is run on centralized database, Okay, centralized bank, central bank. Okay, but the um, inventor of Bitcoin, he has this notion, decentralization. Okay, what they call, um, take away the middleman. So they created this technology, you know, using blockchain. Okay, uh, so they have all the ledger distributed along mm. the internet. Okay, that's how Bitcoin came about. And when it started, they actually It, um, written on the smart contract. Mm -hmm. The smart yes. contract are the code, okay, that you write on the blockchain to say Bitcoin can only have 21 million, you know, Bitcoin forever. Okay, it will not. It cannot have more than 21 mm -hmm. million. And there is this mining. People mine, and the Bitcoin come out, and uh, the, the the developer get rewarded and because it has finite number, 21 million. So it's supply demand, price is supply demand. That's why the price is going up, going up, going up. Mm, going It, up okay. It's a brand now, Bitcoin is a brand. And lately, um, it's been recognized by the US uh, you know, SEC um, that it's a financial asset. But there's Bitcoin ETF, you know, exchange traded fund. So it is formally uh, being accepted as a financial asset. So that, mm. that's Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is so unique. Oh, so unique. <laughs> It come, because it's a number one. Oh, And yes. You know, number two, three, four, <laughs> people just remember the number one. Okay, so that's cryptocurrency. But, you know, the, the differentiation that, that, you know, we want to draw is um, real world asset token that, that we are doing digital asset. In fact, it's also a financial asset because this is based on the business. Now, uh, when it's tokenized, it's fractionized. Okay, so people can buy a very small $10 twenty dollar, a million dollar. Not just you have to invest a lot of money to be, you know, participating mm. in this business yes. or this asset. Like a gold mine. Okay. Um, you can't really invest in a gold mine. But now you, you tokenize the reserves in the gold mine, uh, then you can now buy the token of the gold mine. You can invest in it, okay? Um, you know, just like some um, um, the sapphire. Okay, just like techniques, uh, uh, sorry, antiques. So antiques are $1 million, $2 million, $100 million. Um, one of our, um, uh, another new project that we're working on mm. uh, from a Japanese auction house listed uh, is on tokenizing fine arts, European fine arts. Mm. Okay, so, yeah. th so all these are, mm. you know, at least a million dollar a piece. But after they tokenize, anybody can participate. And I think the important point is uh, asset management, wealth management, right. okay? A lot of people think they're investing in the MEM coins, okay, in those crypto, those mm. tokens. Um, but it's more like a, more like a betting game, mm. okay? Uh, but what we are offering um, is an alternate <laughs> asset. It's an alternate investment asset, okay? That will that you can sleep at night. <laughs> And tomorrow is still here. <laughs> And tomorrow. <laughs> okay, yeah. Mr. Philip. So, courteous, like, uh, Bitcoin is a wow, yeah? 
Oke, okay. kita lanjutkan kepada Pak Hairil. Nah, ya. ini kalau kita bertanya-tanya bagaimana Badan Hukum Malaysia ya melihat tentang Bitcoin ini? Oke. Okay. Ya, silakan. Uh, terima kasih ya. Um, Bitcoin ini uh, bukan saja di Malaysia, hmm. tapi di mana-mana pun ada berbagai-bagai pendapat. Yes. Ada dari segi dari sudut syariah ya. Ada penasihat-penasihat syariah ataupun sekolah-sekolah yang mengatakan Bitcoin ini tidak halal. Ada juga sekolah yang mengatakan Bitcoin ini halal. Uh, dan berbagai-bagai uh, pen, uh, sebab kenapa dia halal, kenapa dia tidak halal. Hmm. Jadi uh, kalau kita tengok di Middle East pun ada pendapat yang kata boleh, ada pendapat yang kata tak boleh. Hmm. Uh, di di Malaysia uh, dari segi uh, dari segi Securities Commission of Malaysia, uh, the Shanghai Advisory Council of Securities Commission of Malaysia um, telah membuat satu uh, uh, pendapat yang mengatakan. Uh, Bitcoin atau uh, Ethereum, Ripple adalah uh, bukannya currency. Dia bukannya currency tetapi adalah satu aset atau komoditi. Dengan sebab itu, uh, sebagai aset atau komoditi, ianya boleh dijual beli. So, dengan sebab itulah uh, berdasarkan kepada uh, pendapat itu, Bitcoin di Malaysia di adalah halal ataupun ada dibenarkan dari segi syariah berdasarkan kepada ianya bukan currency tapi adalah aset atau komoditi jadi boleh dijual beli tetapi ada pendapat-pendapat yang lain yang mengatakan uh, mungkin mungkin mengatakan ya currency sebab tu dia tidak dibenarkan sebab kalau currency feature-feature currency itu kena kena betul ya tapi bitcoin tidak ada setengah-setengah feature sebagai currency uh, contohnya sebagai stock value dia tak ada sebagai medium of exchange not really usually widely used as a medium of exchange satu lagi uh, kalau kita put aside bitcoin kripto-kripto uh, produk yang lain yang uh, ada unsur-unsur spekulasi contohnya jadi uh, itu banyak yang tak dibenarkan dari segi uh, syariah jadi saya untuk nak ambil kesempatan sikit mengatakan uh, ada perbezaan antara contohnya Bitcoin atau cryptocurrency hmm. lain dengan apa yang dibuat oleh Green X uh, itu STO uh, Security Token Offering hmm. di mana Security Token Offering itu adalah berdasarkan betul-betul real world asset uh, saya rasa kalau dikaji Uh, dengan betul saya rasa tid, uh, mungkin pada pendapat saya mungkin uh, security token, token offering ini uh, mungkin tidak, tidak akan ada perbalahan hmm. uh, dari segi pendapat syariah uh, macam di Masrif uh, penasihat syariah Masrif ada yang dari Malaysia, ada yang dari Afrika, hmm. ada yang daripada uh, Middle East ada uh, ada juga daripada Indonesia oh. sebenarnya ya. Jadi, uh, uh, tapi dari segi STO, Security Token Offerings ni, uh, the digitization or tokenization of asset, saya rasa uh, most of the scholars yang dari Masri, Malaysia, Middle East, Africa, tidak ada percanggahan pendapat. Ini adalah asset yang dibenarkan. Hmm. Tapi, saya nak tegaskan dia tak sama macam kita tengok coin-coin uh, oh, yang lain yes. ya kripto uh, currency yang lain ya. sebab ini based on real world asset ya. Mm-hmm. Ya. Okay. apakah kalau di Mas Rif sendiri ada standar-standar khususnya atau mungkin sudah ada tolak ukur seberapa apakah ini sudah bisa dikatakan halal atau tidaknya itu seperti apa kalau di Mas Rif ini kita perlu belajar ya, ya dari kalau, Mas Rif kalau, kalau di Mas Rif uh, untuk kami dari segi uh, security token offering STO uh, yang berdasarkan real, real world asset uh, tidak ada percanggahan memang memang itulah yang dikatakan uh, aset sebenar jadi contoh dia macam uh, Philip uh, bilang tadi mungkin sapphire itu boleh ada common ownership hak milik bersama 
Jadi itu kita boleh tokenization kan dan kita akan uh, uh, boleh di, di hak milik oleh semua masyarakat. Saya rasa itu tidak ada masalah uh, di, di Masri pun tidak ada masalah uh, penasihat-penasihat uh, syarikat Masri pun tidak ada masalah dengan STO. Uh, mungkin dari segi uh, instrumen lain seperti Bitcoin atau Uh, uh, Ethereum, Ripple uh, Dogecoin, Litecoin mungkin ada perbezaan-perbezaan pendapat sedikit ya. Uh, tapi itu kita kena tengok coin by coin, jadi kita tak boleh bagi generalization ya. ok, ok Mr. Philip, uh, sorry I forget uh, the explain the STO, the audience is oh, what? what is the STO? Yes. so you can explain for the audience Yeah, STO stands for Security Token Offering. Okay, you start off the word securities. Mm. Okay, um, in in the legal world, securities meaning is subject to securities law. Okay, so th the token offering is asset back. This is mm. very important. That's why we have this real yeah. world asset. It's asset, asset back. Um, you know, this this particular point uh, needs to be explained a, a little bit further. Okay, um, so we have the business, the mm. EV business. Okay, yes. so that is itself an asset because it's got IP rights, okay, patents. So that is an asset. A gold mine, it's asset. Oh. Okay, because it's all appraised, valued by by professionals. Yeah. Um, so that 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 is the 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 essence of a security token offering. Is the back of it? There's the business. Okay, and there's the asset, and there is the value to it. It's professionally done, so, so that is the uh, reasoning. Offering meaning it's like an IPO, oh, so a I listing. Oh, yeah. wow. That's it, the STO, ya. Yeah. Oke, okay. uh, pemirsa tidak terasa kita sudah ada di penghujung acara. So, Mr. Philip, this is the last segment. So, you have, an, you can... Uh, Closing statement for the audience and saying goodbye to Indonesian people. So, okay, it's yours. Thank you so much. Yes. you know, um, to allow me to be here uh, to share, you know, my journey, our journey mm. uh, in the digital world, in bringing business projects, company, mm. okay, um, to the digital world, you know, for the public. Mm. So. The last question you asked on the security token offering, mm -hmm. um, I, I think one point I would like the audience to remember is that uh, when we bring the project into this STO, we do a lot of um, investigation. We look, we do a lot of review, a lot of compliance. Uh, we treat it like an IPO. Mm. So when we offer um, the token to the public, what we can say is mm. uh, the asset back is there, Mm. Okay, we have the Shirai advisor looking at that. Why is the asset is there? Because it's been professionally evaluated. So, for example, with a, a gold mine, so it's actually a geologist, you know, drill holes. Mm. And they look at what's come out and they go to the lab and they, they say, oh, the gold concentration is so much, so much. And that is like a, the NS43101 report for US um, um, uh, gold mines. Um, so, when it goes trading, what we can say on the day it, it started trading with, with that particular uh, WRA, uh, uh, STO token, the asset is there. Now, we can't say going forward it will be go up 10 times or what, but at that point in time, it's real asset behind this token. I think that, that is a big distinction. And from a lot of the MAM coins that you see, a lot of the cryptos that you see, uh, is a lot based on concept. Um, but not yet. I think maybe an early stage mm. project. Um, and again, going forward, Greenix, we are we are an ESG, uh, Shirai compliant. What we want is to support um, green projects, sustainable energy. We want to make a better better world. Mm. Um, so we already identify a lot of um, um, very unique but uh, impactful, okay, impactful technology and companies to to bring to our platform. And you know we we are looking at doing our own platform token, so we can support this early stage project, okay? Green sustainable energy, 
the sustainable technology, um, you know, uh, just a couple of examples. Um, one of them actually a turn uh, use engine oil, which is very toxic, okay, polluting, mm. um, and go through the 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 uh, facility. It come up green diesel, okay, that you can actually use. Um, so an, another is an EV plane. Another another company, another project that we are uh, involved with. Uh, some agriculture as well, with uh, you know coconut. Mm. They have specially engineered a coconut plant, a <laughs> tree, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so on and so forth. So it's very exciting. Um, you know, we at Greenex, we want to, you know, continue to move forward. And important, I think, is also from Indo Indonesia. Uh, that's why we come here and we talk to the local, um, you know, Sharia leaders, clergymen, to learn from them and then to share what, what we've done in Malaysia or outside Indonesia. Uh, to look at project by itself to make it Sharia compliant, okay, mm -hmm. and that gives a more choices, I think, to the public, to the investor, uh, that they have an alternative investment um, that we bring to them. Wow. wow. Okay, Mr. Philip. Okay, kita lanjutkan kepada. Pak Khairil mungkin bisa juga memberikan sharing-sharingnya sebagai yeah. pesan-pesan yeah. kepada masyarakat-masyarakat Indonesia terkait yeah. syariah lawyer yang ada di Malaysia. Silakan. Terima kasih lagi sekali kepada TV 9 Nusantara. Uh, saya rasa kita sekarang hidup di zaman yang very exciting. Yes. Uh, kita hidup di zaman very digital. Jadi sebagai uh, uh, seorang ex-Islamic banker dan juga sebagai penasihat syariah saya rasa umat-umat uh, Islam perlu mengambil kesempatan dan juga perlu mempelajari apakah uh, teknologi digital itu dan pastikan kita masih dapat mengamalkan cara hidup kita sebagai seorang Islam uh, investment kita ataupun pelaburan-pelaburan uh, kita sebagai seorang Islam masih mematuhi syariah. Begitu juga produk-produk uh, perbankan Islam kita uh, mematuhi kehendak-kehendak syariah. Uh, saya rasa itu perlu yang perlu kita uh, pastikan dan uh, satu lagi uh, perbankan syariah dan produk-produk uh, uh, digital syariah adalah masih muda. Masih muda, masih awal. Uh, jadi contohnya di Malaysia lebih kurang 30%, 27-30% daripada total perbankan itu ada perbankan syariah di Indonesia yang saya faham masih lagi rendah. Jadi mungkin ada peluang untuk kita mempelajari apa itu hmm. perbankan Islam, nombor satu. Yang nombor dua yang pentingnya menghayati dan menggunakan produk-produk perbankan Islam. Hmm. Jadi dengan adanya digital uh, Islamic digital products, contohnya macam uh, yang Mr. Philip cakap tadi, uh, mem mem membolehkan uh, umat-umat Islam uh, uh, bersama-sama invest dalam produk-produk yang yang lebih yang sebelum ni kita tak dapat invest. Contohnya Sapphire. Sapphire untuk kita invest mungkin beribu-ribu ya. Uh, atau juta-juta uh, miliar di sini hmm. Tapi dengan teknologi yang ada sekarang Kita boleh bayar dengan kos yang rendah Untuk kita mempunyai hak milik bersama Dengan pelabur-pelabur yang lain uh, Satu lagi yang sebelum saya tamatkan juga uh, uh, Dari segi uh, syariah uh, Memang masih ada perbezaan pendapat uh, tapi di Middle East, saya 14 tahun di sana, ada pendapatnya sendiri. Hmm. Di Malaysia ada pendapatnya sendiri. Di Indonesia pun ada pendapatnya sendiri. Yeah. Di subkontinen di India dan Pakistan, Pakistan uh, contohnya mempunyai pendapat-pendapat yang sendiri dari segi produk-produk uh, 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 Islamik, ya, digital dan perbankan Islam. Uh, tapi itu itu adalah satu bagi saya satu yang membuatkan is, uh, Islamic finance itu lebih indah. Jadi kita ada berbanyak macam pendapat dan uh, yang pentingnya adalah kita tahu kita selalu memilih pada orang, orang uh, masyarakat Muslim selalu cuba memilih produk yang berteraskan 
kehendak-kehendak syariah. Saya rasa itu yang penting untuk kita. Masya Allah. Terima kasih. <laughs> iya, terima kasih banyak disampaikan kepada Bapak Hairil Anwar selaku Marshif Syariah Lawyer dari Malaysia. Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih banyak. Cik, ya. Terima kasih, terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih. Enja, ya. Terima kasih. <laughs> Oke, okay. tidak lupa juga. Thank you for Mr. Philip Tan, CEO Green X Corporate Hong Kong. So, welcome and enjoy in Indonesia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Iya. Pemirsa ruang bisnis, tentunya Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin di bulan April lalu, kita ada sebuah ini ya sharing-sharing bersama dengan Green X terkait dengan kripto syariah. Nah, ini adalah salah satu prosesi simbolis penanda tanganan Notulen Meeting sebagai salah satu langkah bahwa Indonesia sudah akan bergegas ya, akan bergegas mempelajari lebih jauh terkait yang satu ini. Nah, pastinya saya Indah Komaidi mewakili segenap kru yang bertugas juga mengucapkan terima kasih kepada pemirsa di rumah yang sudah menyaksikan dan juga mendengarkan ya sedari tadi sharing-sharing kita bersama dengan Mr. Philip Tan dan juga Bapak Hairil Anwar. Oke. Terakhir dari saya, dari saya, bisakah Indonesia mencontoh yang satu ini? Wah, kita kembalikan kepada lembaga-lembaga terkait ya. Oke, saya Indah Kumaidi, Wakil Sinapro yang bertugas, pamit undur diri. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.